much value. And I'd like to introduce our new distributed generation uh, application, Combined Heat and Emergency Power, here at the Villa Charities Vaughan Long-Term Care Facility for Seniors. The Combined Heat and Emergency Power System is a unique application of traditional backup generation and new gas and cogeneration technology. What we have here is we have an engine that's been replacing the traditional diesel engine and it's designed to meet three key criteria for Villa Charities. First, it supplies a backup or emergency power, 140 kilowatts of emergency power similar to a traditional diesel backup generator. Second, in case of a prolonged power outage, as a natural gas engine at 335 kilowatts, we can island the entire building and, and maintain it for any period of time. Finally, to reduce greenhouse gases and provide energy efficiency, it's a combined heat and power system. As a long-term care facility, a multi-residential facility, this building requires heat throughout the year. This engine, when running in parallel with the grid, will provide the heat capacity of the heat requirement of the building, as well as supplement the electricity from the grid in order to be more energy efficient, and lower emissions, and more power security. At the heart of our combined heat and emergency power system, the CHEP, is the GE Yenbacher natural gas-based uh, spark-ignited turbocharged engine. <clears throat> it is uh, 335 kilowatt, it's an inline eight-cylinder engine, and it has heat recovery systems in place to ensure efficient operation. And this engine has been sized to, to handle the emergency loads and in addition also to, uh, to keep the building sustainable in a prolonged outage and also to do that efficiently by means of transferring all of the energy, thermal energy coming from the engines, oil cooler, jack of water, exhaust systems, and putting that energy into the buildings, heating systems and domestic water systems. What we have here is we have an emergency power supply system that's based on natural gas. Typically those installations are diesel, but the new standard, the CSA 282, 2005 edition, now allows for natural gas. One of the requirements is to provide a dedicated uh, gas supply line, which is what we've done here. We've come off the main line ahead of the red fire valve, and we're supplying a dedicated line to the emergency generator. This allows the facility to operate in a prolonged outage mode with unlimited fuel supply. This natural gas engine is equipped with heat recovery systems, both high temperature and low temperature. On the high temperature circuit, we take a flow of hot water from the boiler return line coming from this line here enters into the engine at this connection point it flows through an oil cooler to pick up the heat from the oil and keep the oil cool it exits the oil cooler here increasing the temperature comes down along this pipe and then enters the jacket water heat exchanger which then takes heat from the jacket water of the engine to keep the jacket water cool and keep the engine cool. That water temperature increases further. It exits the jacket water heat exchanger, comes underneath here and enters the exhaust heat recovery heat exchanger where we then extract heat from the exhaust of the engine. The water is in, the, is in tubes inside of the shell. The exhaust coming out of the turbo enters into the shell of the seat exchanger and exits at a much lower temperature. The exhaust is normally 950 degrees Fahrenheit, but by the time it exits, it's about 250 degrees Fahrenheit and it will go up the stack. The water which we take from the boiler, it will enter at about 160 degrees Fahrenheit and by the time it goes through all those circuits, it will exit from here at 195 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's an increase of 35 degrees, and then that water will then make its way back to the boiler return line, where it then increases the return line, the return line temperature that the boilers see. So the boilers, in fact, then will have less work to do in order to maintain proper heating of the building. In addition to recovering the high temperature heat from the engine, we've also recovered heat from the after-cooler circuit, that's the low temperature heat. That brings our total efficiency up to 88.3%. So this additional heat is, is recovered through the after-cooler circuit. So our, our fuel is coming in at low pressure. We're bringing in our air, mixing it. We have our turbocharger compressor. So the turbo spins the compressor. The air and the fuel is mixed uh, after mix is, is charged and goes through an after-cooler circuit. 
which is water cooled. So this water then is, is primarily exchanged through this uh, double wall plate and frame heat exchanger, which preheats domestic water that is intended to be heated. Now that we've seen the heat recovery circuits of this natural gas engine, we'll go and have a look at where that thermal energy is integrated into the building, and that is the boiler plant, so we'll go and have a look. Included in the building's heating system are uh, six natural gas boilers, which provide all of the heat for, the, for heating the building. Uh, our cogen system uh, puts all of its uh, high temperature heat into that same loop, and these boilers then will add any additional heat that's required beyond what the cogen is putting into it. Our main tie-in point is on the main return line to the boilers, so before any of the boilers have to heat, or heat up the return water, that's where we extract the stream of water that uh, we send to our genset. The genset is kept cool, and uh, all, of the, all of the thermal energy from the engine is put into that, into that uh, pipe and then put right back into the boiler heating loop. So thereby increasing the temperature of the return water supply to the boilers, and the boiler control system is set up so that it's very simple. If there's extra heat added on, the boilers will start to come down. If, if more heat's required, more boilers will pick up the additional heat requirements. All of the heat that we put into our boiler heating system is then transferred into the heating system to the building. Included in that is the domestic water system. So we take water from the heating system through a plate and, plate and frame heat exchanger and we will heat domestic water up to 160 degrees and then from there it's trimmed down to the required temperatures, 120 degrees supply for general purpose, 140 degrees supply for dishwashing and 160 degrees supply for laundry. The genset also has a low temperature circuit which we recover the heat from and all of that heat is taken and stored into this tank here, it's a 1200 gallon tank and its main function is to preheat all of the cold water that is intended to be heated up. So before the, the, the heating system has to heat the domestic water, we will preheat it using the heat from our, our low temperature circuit. Thank you for coming on a tour with us of this new and innovative combined heat and emergency power supply system. 